Hello friends, welcome to my Royal Family News Channel. Before moving on to the video, if you are not subscribed to my channel, do not forget to subscribe and turn on notifications, so let's move on to the video. This twist in the tale to Prince William's Earthshot Prize Climate Leaders Youth Program speech has surely made for another wrinkle in the sad saga of royal family friction lending credence to the charges of bitterness, putting a claim like that. Is Prince Harry not Lilibet's father? in what was supposed to be a call to arms about climate change was an action both shocking and telling. This was public for all to see literally and begs the question how strained is their relationship as brothers? Having once considered themselves an inseparable pair dealing with the pressures of royal life as a duo, their relationship is bitterly fractured, both in private and public. The addition of the royal family is an international player, so using that platform to ridicule his brother William right there and then indicates planning with intent. That remark is hardly an offhand one, it highlights just how personal and deeply entrenched this feud has become. The royal family, long synonymous with decorum and discretion, is under more scrutiny as its divisions over the confrontation are being fought in public, turning a monarchical reality show into something approaching soap opera. It's not simply a family feud, it embodies a fundamental disagreement over values and ethos within the royal family itself. The simmering tension between Harry's bid to carve out an independent role away from royal tradition, and William serving as the dutiful heir, is a chasm that has grown wider in recent years. For everyone else, this all-latest sideshow is a startling view and also an example of how the best happened to even the very top family divisions. What all of this ultimately where it leads is anyone's guess, but the one thing clearly not abating is the internal drama in the House of Windsor. And it implies that there exist terribly dark secrets, realpolitik I might even call them, which could change the royal family's public image permanently. But you can hardly argue that the whole time since the Sussexes turned up, they've walked to the beat of their own drum. Together, they have proudly announced their modern progressive views of today with little ambiguity, the couple is more than eager to find themselves in existence completely removed from the institution, the crown, that produced his family unit to begin with. But at what cost? They preach incessantly about freedom and mental health but actually demonstrate that losing royal duty is more important than true happiness. It has again opened the door to more speculation about their fraught family dynamics, however, with William's words. But is that why Harry's relationship with the royals holds so much importance? Or is his brokenness largely a result of personal demons and not royal life? It's an understatement to say the journey has been a strange one for Harry. He was, and need I add this line for all you Boston haters out there? The Prince Harry of rebellious antics, now he is a PR tool of self-righteousness and martyrdom. Then, of course, 2020 when he announced he was giving up royal duties to protect mental health, the defining move that widened his rift with William. It was a move that rocked the monarchy, one which left Harry's relationship with his brother forever wounded. This resulted in interviews and declarations, from Oprah to Netflix, where he billed himself as the maligned prince battling a family that never understood him. But what if? Just what if? It was never Harry internally where the push came from for him in the royal fold that was his insecurities and need to be validated. William's comments appear to allude to a much larger frustration, one centuries in creation. Or at least it runs deeper than feuding over such superficial stuff. And what of Meghan? The Duchess of Drama herself? The royal family and the woman who thought she could change it. Meghan, who truly cannot shut the fuck up with her virtue signaling as if she is living Moses reincarnated and embodied, some would argue that this very narcissism led us to Megxit, seldom, if ever, made any moment, the Oprah interview, the Netflix joint, a means of elevating or illuminating royal life. Extra credit, Meghan plays the media like a fiddle to make story number one news international right after plane takes off. But, come on, Meghan is good at many things but one of her best moves is to play the victim. From the continuing saga of being silenced by the monarchy to her tireless search for relevancy, Meghan has let her actions speak and they are far more telling than anything she could ever say. And now, as this whole ordeal plays out and hints at playing out some more, 
it seems she and Harry want as many eyes on them as they possibly can get. And which begs the question, why now for William to personally attack his brother in this way? That is the question that everybody would like to know. Or maybe he just simply is fed up. For years now, William has been quietly stewing as Harry and Meghan have taken shots at the royal family in California, hurling verbal grenades, shot after shot, as they built their empire over there. Maybe William simply decided he should stop allowing his brother and Meghan to drag the family name through the dirt. Not only has he made an international event the stage for such a stunning statement, thus bringing light on just how riven the family is, but he's also suggested that it could be curtains for the Sussexes as far as royal spectacle goes, at least in part. Predictably enough, the ideology of the beholder lines have quickly hardened over the unsanctioned gimbals there. William has faced praise among supporters for taking a stand, condemning the perceived hypocrisy of Harry and Meghan, while manipulating the public. After all, they have spent years constructing a narrative that painted them as victims. If the facts changed, though, and they ended up on the other side of the fence? They sure wouldn't be so innocent either. Others, however, are firmly on Team Harry celebrating his choice to separate himself from the royal family and forge his own path. He is often seen as attempting to flee an oppressive structure, establishing his own track. However, that journey is not without its share of contradictions, hypocrisy, and a long list of public embuggerances. The big question now is where the monarchy goes from here? A public family feud like this is bound to shatter any semblance of strength and unity that the royals have carefully crafted through the decades. Or are these same media questions and controversies just one more thing that make the institution itself weaker? Or maybe it is William, in a show of uncharacteristic spunk whose actions ultimately pull the family together and heal their rifts? The one thing we do know is that this saga has a long way to go. And we all can see, the relationship between William and Harry never going to be fixed. And the monarchy? That, at least until Harry and Meghan cease making every damn story about them, is over to you. Although William's comments in Cape Town may be the stimulus for the current row, reality is that Harry and Meghan have been away from it for a while. Their attempt to transition from royals to activists has all the success of trying to hammer jelly to a wall. It simply cannot support the weight of their contradictions, and this echo chamber they built around themselves, a narrative of victimhood and martyrdom, was already doomed to collapse. Their latest antics have, however, borne different fruit with the public perceiving a fresh veneer of moral superiority this time more transparent than glass. At first, we could easily buy into their story. They styled themselves as 21st century Robin Hoods, wrestling the crown for change. But with each new stunt, it becomes clear that the rebellion in their reckoning is a mere power play, by ego and necessity for relevance. Let's be honest. The royal family would obviously be the reality TV program and Harry and Meghan are basically the overly dramatic contestants who think they are the main character, but everyone else is over here like just get out already they have pretended so long to be the outcast that they do not remember how it feels to truly fit in. And every time they throw a tantrum, they are only confirming that they are not deep thinkers at all. But they are just performers and seeking limelight, even at the cost of everything. Megan, as always the diva, is also great at working her narrative to suit every occasion. When in reality, the more she prevaricates, the more her own story unfolds. All her incessant stream of truth bombs reveals is shadow work she still needs to do and that quite frankly, she just can't keep her story straight. From playing the victim to inserting herself into every trending issue, Megan really thinks she can control the media and make us love her. Like she is doing the world a favor by simply being in the public eye. Spoiler alert, it's not. Harry is just getting embarrassing with his latest antics. You know, when Harry gave up being a royal and all that, he would have decided who he was and what his mission in life was. He has been doing no such thing, rather, he has pursued shallow headlines and solicited concern for his perpetuating dazed condition. Harry came to the role with all the charm of a free spirit, but has since become something of a man-child, 
unable to really come to terms that living in royal family limbo is for nobody a sustainable solution. He is not creating his own path instead, he follows the Meghan way and we know what happened with that. There's always been something off about their dynamic. Harry, a man riddled with deep-rooted insecurities, has only ever tried to please his wife, Meghan, and have her attention at any cost. Instead of appropriately working through his feelings, he has become just another bit player in the supporting cast for her interminable drama. As if to rebel against his rebellion, Harry seems to have decided that being an accessory for Meghan is the best he can do. But no one is buying it. Remove the headlines and PR stunts, and all you have is a pair of whingers who cannot stop bitching about being repressed while simultaneously earning millions off lucrative contracts effectively cashing in on their alleged pain. Okay, they have swans the asking price to speak charity gals but let's not trick ourselves. Activism is catchy work for them, all they pulled at best a PR trick to make themselves stick in this world. Megan's, her supplicant husband handler included, New forays into politics have taken on an almost comical quality. Kind of like the guy at the party that thinks they're saving the world by raising their voice and repeating whatever is popular. Well, the trouble is no one else can hear it. It makes one weary when they showcase their charity work as proof of their benevolence. They proclaim to be social justice warriors, but every action screams of self-serving. The causes only become relevant when they can bolster their brand or egos. But no one's fooled. They should get over it like the rest of the world has. Harry and Meghan continued to hang on to the idea that they still matter to the royal family, or indeed, anyone who matters worldwide, but like a drowning man clutching at bubbles. And their so-called progressive ideas for transforming the monarchy. If they honestly think some catchy soundbites are going to change an institution that has lasted for several centuries, they are living in a dream. British monarchy is not run on Instagram likes or magazine covers. That feels very much more organic slash adult. The world is changing, of course, but William and Catherine are the future of the monarchy in a way Harry and Meghan cannot ever be. Instead of pulling heartstrings and seeking pity, they should pause to remember that their legacy will not be written by the media or deals struck for dollars or headlines. That depends on how they confront these contradictions and whether their perceived history of oppression by male priests and scholars can propel them to real influence without keeping the focus on victimization. Until then, their so-called revolutionary actions will remain hollow. When it comes to their relationship with the royal family, reconciliation is not on the cards again just yet. Every move they make further widens the gulf. William, Catherine and Princess and are the future of the monarchy and everyone knows this. Harry and Meghan showcase what happens if you want to play, but refuse to know the game. They will need to answer difficult questions about their motives, what they have done and how they are trying to stay relevant even as the world moves on without them. But for now they appear fated to continue their charge in quest of each new headline, eager not to fade from public view. And with each new story they tell, they show themselves to be who they really are, famous people who lost sight of the fact that their job was to pretend and not try living their fantasies in front of a studio audience. Harry and Meghan go on parading about in public as if their version of celebrity activism are giving the world a makeover. However, their actions speak otherwise. What they don't realize though is that in trying to separate themselves from the royal family and create a new narrative, they only underscore their own vividly evident hypocrisy and deep-seated insecurities. Just look at how they seek to present themselves as social justice warriors of the modern age. How incredibly noble of them. They have become what is perhaps the ultimate cliché of privilege in disguise as virtue. Almost comical that Megan who has had everything handed to her since birth relishes being a victim of institutional oppression. How ironic, if irony could be bottled it would indeed have the Sussexes brand. This same couple, who we have to pay millions of dollars, between book deals, speaking engagements and Netflix specials, to listen to them preach about helping the marginalized. In an age where too much attention closes the gap between privacy and publicity, their third act of public declaration of elements of their personal lives has opened the chasm even wider.
The bidding of their truth has become an ongoing game that serves only to remind us of how invested they are in remaining victims of their own making. More than anything, it is very clear that Harry and Meghan are exceptional in bringing media focus to themselves at every opportunity. Except they don't realize this, the more they push their message, the more forcefully they parade their status as nothing but pathetic attention gatherers. Take Harry's recent comments as examples of familial relationships. Oh, how poignant. The much-loved rebel is so desperately seeking relevance now that he starts stirring up family drama. There's no better way to raise eyebrows than by promise of sordid revelations about your own family. An archetypical act of someone unable to accept that the story they were center stage in is passing on without them. However, let's not be misleading because this isn't about correcting the narrative. Not even close, this is Harry trying to show he still has some actual power no matter how temporary. And then, of course, there's Megan who is never very far behind when the opportunity to stir things up presents itself. If there is a thing she loves more than having a platform it is crippling a microphone. Be it waxing poetic about her mental health battles, always perfectly timed with book drops, of course, or lecturing on diversity from her Montecito palace, Megan always plays up her own superior enlightenment. The narrative of oppression and survival embeds itself in Schwartz's subsequent efforts to recast public perception, but the encounter suggests that some familiar cynicism will surround her efforts. The reality? The image Megan has spent so much time creating is a shaky house of cards that relies on selective pieces of truth and her insistence upon herself. Their statements contradict each other, and it's hardly possible to ignore it. On the one hand, they claim to have escaped the toxic royal glare. One on the other hand, however, they do everything to stay in front of the media. Meanwhile, there is a major problem with their alleged retreat from royal life, they cannot stop discussing it. The hypocrisy is thicker than peanut butter. However, the most obvious indication of their delusion is their over-reliance on how they believe they were treated by the British press. It sounds like they convinced themselves that they're martyrs victims of a ruthless tabloid machine. However, for two people so keen on escaping the media maelstrom, we keep seeing them pop up back within it, in their Netflix deal, podcasting pursuits and more. Seems that they're addicted to the very thing they say they hate. The more they complain about the press, the more closely they approach becoming what they tell us they despise. Just a constant cycle of hypocritical behavior that reminds us all how selfish they actually are. And please, their charity efforts? The Sussexes have been quick to trumpet their philanthropy, but when your foundation looks like of self-promotion it is difficult to take the couple seriously. Central to their charitable endeavors is the sheer desperation for relevance, a demonstration of actually doing something, anything at all, as long as it follows a hot trend. There is, of course, nothing wrong with charity in and of itself. But when the emphasis is on raising your profile rather than creating real change, it falls flat. The most ironic aspect of their behavior is how they cling to the royal family yet desperately tell us how independent they are from it. They each make a monstrous version of every move anyone makes that keeps them on the front page for none other than the current news cycle reminding people of their former titles when they were something more incredible than just awful. If they really wanted freedom, they would get off the news cycle and stop trying to remain relevant AF asterisk asterisk king institution that was literally left behind. Unfortunately, they have simply become a fallacy of a husband and wife who want all the trappings of fame but none of the responsibilities thereof. The bottom line? Harry and Meghan offer a tutorial on how to be ostracized by your relatives, your fans, and eventually yourself. By all means, they need something to cling onto to remain relevant in the media market selling their truth so in turn they have manufactured a never-ending cycle of contradiction and hypocrisy. Unclear whether what they wanted to be, activists, celebrities, or victims. And that lack of clarity is at the center of their issues. No matter how they may try, this means they cannot avoid the truth that their public image stands on an intrinsically unstable plateau. Each statement they put out, each performance they make exposes them for what they are, a pair simply trying to stay in the public eye and set a light every road behind them.
And there you have it, a tale of hypocrisy, narcissistic theatrics, and a relentless pursuit for relevance. Harry and Meghan, for all of the attention they try to bring to noble causes, have cast themselves as little more than stars in their own overpopulated soap opera. Claiming victimhood whilst enjoying their fame in the sun, or freedom for them and making royal drama for everyone else, they are hypocrisy personified. But don't take my word for it. Observe them as closely or otherwise you decide and ask yourself, is this really the couple we are meant to aspire to be like, or some types of slow-moving vehicle accident? Are they ever going to notice that they have become the very thing they accuse of? Only time will tell. That's it for our video my friends, I hope you have liked it, please let me know your thoughts in the comments, and like the video. If you haven't done so yet if you want to be first to be informed about my content, please subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on notifications. Thank you for spending this time with me, take care of yourself and stay healthy, I'll see you in the next one.